Hey guys, you're watching Let's Talk About Prepping. I'm Tyler, your host, and in this video, we're going to start our review of the book Meditations on Violence, a comparison of martial arts training and real-world violence by Sergeant Rory Miller. This book is an extremely valuable resource in building or reassessing your planned responses to violence of various kinds. Most of us are pretty unfamiliar with violence, and those who are familiar with violence are usually familiar with just one or a few kinds of violence. Sergeant Rory Miller has been in many different kinds of violent encounters, and between that and his extensive martial arts training, he has brought his experience in the form of this book to share with the community, and after I contacted his publishers, they have allowed me to share this with my community. And so we're going to start our review of this book, which I think will be a great resource for us as survivalists and as preppers to be able to weather violent encounters, whether those are the kind that can harm us physically or change our lives as we know it. And both of those things are things that we try to avoid. So let's get into our review of this extremely valuable book. Meditations on Violence, a Comparison of Martial Arts Training in Real-World Violence by Sergeant Rory Miller. The cover depicts somebody being carjacked by an armed assailant. Now, I am going to read the advanced praise section because the publisher was kind enough to share this content with us, so I think the least we can do is acknowledge the praise that this book has gotten from its contemporaries. And also, this praise section has some really good insights into the information that you'll find contained in this book. Chris Wilder, a martial artist and author, says, Simply put, Meditations on Violence tells the truth. Sergeant Rory Miller will wipe away any fantasy you have about fighting. Fighting and violence will tolerate no lies, especially the ones you tell yourself. The more you read, the more you will realize that the stupid monkey dance you do is meaningless. The words, the displays, they are all predictable, and Sergeant Miller has your number. Sergeant Alan D. Arsenault, veteran of the Vancouver PD, martial artist, and author, says, Miller uses his words like a samurai sword, cutting through flesh, bone, and sinew, directly into the heart of the matter. Your ego and lifelong distorted illusions about yourself, violence, and ways in which you prepare yourself for today's battlefield, the street, where illusion and reality clash. Will you be a victim of your own training flaws? This book is a wake-up call to all those practicing, and especially those teaching, martial arts who think that self-defense training in the dojo actually constitutes proper preparation for real-life encounters on the street. Miller says a real fight for your life is nothing like sparring. Indeed, it isn't. Lawrence A. Kane, a martial artist, author, and security supervisor, says, This book is a refreshingly frank, honest, and in-depth assessment of violence. As a corrections officer, Miller tangles with hardcore predators for a living. He routinely survives brutal encounters that would leave the average person physically shattered and emotionally wrecked. Miller's insights on how to make self-defense work and overcome subconscious resistance to meeting violence with violence could very well save your life one day. Learn how to think critically about the subject, determine how to evaluate sources of knowledge, and understand how to identify strategies and select tactics to deal with violence effectively. This extraordinarily well-written book is packed with interesting, informative, and, most importantly, useful information. Antonio B. Urena, detective sergeant and martial artist, says, A must-read book for law enforcement officers, martial artists, and anyone interested in learning about the complexities of violence. Not only do I highly recommend this book, but will be required reading for my students as well. M. Guthrie, a federal air marshal, says, This is the finest self-defense book it has ever been my pleasure to read, and I have read quite a few. I feel it is a seminal work, and that is not praise I bandy about lightly. In fact, I hope that my many friends in the self-defense publishing world forgive me for putting Mr. Miller's book above theirs in my particular pecking order. It is simply that good. This book is not a book that will teach you angry monkey kung fu or the tiger claws and ox technique. In fact, the book is very short on technique offered, which is its true strength. There are innumerable books out there that are technique driven. That's not the problem. What is lacking, and most sorely needed, is exploration on the realities of human-on-human -human violence. What drives it, how do you survive it, and how and what we can learn from it. As a law enforcement officer, I've been in many, many use of force incidents, a couple of shootings, and had more incidents that had the potential to become violent but didn't. And very few of them did any particular technique come to me to save the day. 
What served me much better was an understanding of what was happening, recognizing it as it happened, and not letting the fear and adrenaline keep me from acting, even if the acting in question was simply talking the situation down. Hopefully your particular art has given you the physical tools needed to affect your self-defense. Technique is important, no doubt, but any defense scenario is much more than a series of techniques thrown in a vacuum. This book will fill in those gaps, all the other stuff that goes along with it. And that is truly where the art of self-defense lies, outside of technique. In the world of martial arts, there are many books written by experts in their various arts. While these authors are experts in their own martial discipline, very few can make the claim that they are experts in combat in the real world. Yes, contrary to popular belief, just because you are an expert in the martial arts does not make you an expert in self-defense or real-world combat. However, every once in a while, along comes someone who is both an expert in martial arts and in the area of real-world combat. Even more rare is the person who has taken their years of training in the martial arts and adapted it to the realities of a violent world. Rory Miller, an experienced martial artist and corrections officer, is such a person. In his book, Meditations on Violence, a comparison of martial arts training and real-world violence, he explores the reality of violence and how to survive it. Exposing the myths that surround violence and combat, Rory gives the reader a stark look into the real world, one that he must confront every day when he goes to work. Rather than a how-to book filled with lots of cool pictures, his book informs the reader of the psychology, mindset, and strategies that will keep you alive, and suggests methods that will better prepare you for the real world. I highly recommend this book for anyone who may have to confront the reality of violence, especially martial artists, who are often in the most need of a reality check. Robert Carver, martial artist, president, U.S. Martial Arts Federation, founder of Budo Sikh Martial Arts Community. Ian Abernathy, British Combat Association senior coach, martial artist, and author, says, one of the best books on self-protection ever written. This book is packed with vital information and is certain to be of great benefit to all martial artists wise enough to read it. Outstanding. Lauren Christensen, retired Portland police officer, martial artist, and author, says, A fresh voice writing from the trenches on the realities of real fighting. Listen to him. This book sheds insight on the psychology and physicality of dealing with people who want to rip your head off. If you are really serious about self-defense, you'll want to learn from a veteran corrections officer the ugly reality of real fighting as opposed to how it's taught in too many strip mall dojos. Every martial artist, every cop, and every corrections officer should read this book. Mark McYoung, martial artist and self-defense consultant, writes, The difference between theory and practice is, in theory, there is no difference. Unfortunately, countless law enforcement and correctional officers, security professionals, and private citizens have discovered this also applies to the training they have received in the safety of a martial arts school or academy and the realities of applying that training in a live fire situation. The reason this transition is so difficult is because surviving physical violence is so much more than just punching, kicking, or pulling a trigger. From the safety of training, these elements seem like small obstacles that will be easily overcome. Unfortunately, in a live fire situation, those small obstacles can become huge canyons. Rory Miller's book is not only a fantastic introduction to what you will face in a violent situation, but it provides keen insights and concepts that even an experienced operative will find useful in staying safe in a dangerous occupation. Next we have a title page with an image of what looks like a crime scene or a mock-up of a crime scene. Either way, it's a, definitely a good depiction of what you can expect a violent encounter to look like, uh, much different than your usual Hollywood depiction of a fight scene where the good guy wins. Here we have the publisher's card. And here we have a legal disclaimer, which I'm going to share and let stand for myself as well. I am simply just sharing this information with you guys for you to take into consideration. Warning, readers are encouraged to be aware of all appropriate local and national laws relating to self-defense, reasonable force, and the use of weaponry, and act in accordance with all applicable laws at all times. Neither the authors nor the publisher assume any responsibility for the use or misuse of information contained in this book. Nothing in this document constitutes a legal opinion, nor should any of its contents be treated as such. While the authors believe that everything herein is accurate, any questions regarding specific self-defense situations, legal liability, and or interpretation of federal, state, or local laws should always be addressed by an attorney at law.
When it comes to martial arts, self-defense, and related topics, no text, no matter how well written, can substitute for professional hands-on instruction. These materials should be used for academic study only. And here's the foreword by Stephen Barnes. There's a gap between reality and fantasy, and that gap is where the novelist plays. Whether the reality of day-to-day -day life and marriage as opposed to the fantasy world of falling in love, the reality of the workaday world as opposed to the fantasy of making it big, or the reality of life and death combat as opposed to the fantasies of battlefield glory. The gaps between those things are the meat of my profession. Because so few of us actually place our lives in jeopardy, ever face the reality of combat or self-defense, of facing an aggressive human being, or discovering our own potential for violence, we are endlessly fascinated by images of the men and women who can and have done such things. We make them into heroes, we study them in books, we are hypnotized by their images on 30-foot high movie screens and pay those who can convincingly portray them staggering sums of money. And behind much of our fascination is a question, what would I be in that context? Could I cope? And what would I become if I did? What would happen if I could not? One of those who portrayed this hyper-effective fighting machine stereotype was, of course, Bruce Lee. And after Enter the Dragon, legions of young men swamped martial arts schools all over the world, seeking to be strong, to be brave, to be capable, to, in other words, deal with their fear that they would not be able, or to feed their hunger to learn what that mysterious creature lurking in the back of their subconscious was really all about. I remember during the early 1980s when training at the Filipino Kali Academy, a school maintained by Danny Inasanto and Richard Bustillo, two former Lee students, that every time a new class opened up, we'd be flooded by the LBKs, the little blonde kids. They came in the doors with their eyes filled with dreams of martial glory, and we knew that the instant it got real, the instant we put on the gloves and actually started whacking each other, 90% of them would flee. And friends, sparring in the school has a very limited application to what happens on the streets. Those of us who wanted to learn how to apply what we learned in an academic context to a real life and death situation studied texts by ancient samurai, killer monks, warriors of every culture, those who had actually been and done. We struggled to grasp the difference between fantasy and reality, between theory and application, because the gap between them could cost us our lives. Could we do it? And what if we could not? I met Rory Miller about 15 years ago and was immediately impressed by an odd fluidity of movement that told me that he had endured long and intense practice in some effective physical discipline. I suspected martial applications. Over time, I learned about his background and that his profession as a corrections officer placed him in the peculiar position of, as he said at the time, having a fight a day. Every day, against some of the most dangerous and desperate members of our society, this was not a theoretician. But more than his obvious skill, what impressed me was the quality of his relationship with his lady, Cami. Their clear and obvious love told me that he had been able to find a way to engage in violence at a level most martial artists, most people, cannot even dream, without losing his soul. Because he is both classically trained and the survivor of literally countless all-out confrontations, Rory has the absolute right and responsibility to share his impressions of the difference between theory and application, what works and what will get you killed. What attitudes and illusions are harbored by those of us who don't have to face the animals, who enjoy hurting, killing, raping, maiming? What is that space? Where do you have to go inside yourself to survive? I believe that his training, environment, and inclination created a perfect storm of martial awareness in which he has attained a kind of clarity about these things that is a hallmark of those on the road to enlightenment. Very few human beings would be willing to pay the price he has paid or be capable of paying it even if they were willing. That he is willing to report back what he has learned is an act of love and social responsibility. I have the very highest respect for Rory and what he has to say about the gap between martial arts as taught and conceptualized and survival in the crucible of actual combat. In other words, how he stepped through the fire without being utterly destroyed by the flame. Meditations on Violence, a Comparison of Martial Arts Training in Real World Violence, is not a joke or a fantasy or a screed written to solve the ego of some wannabe. I've met the men who work with Rory, and they are tough, hard guys, and they adore him. 
They know that what he knows and who he is has kept them alive to return to their lives and families. You hold in your hands a document long in incubation, the musings of a modern warrior on a topic central to mankind's survival since the first dawn. Can I? And if I can, how? And who will I be? What must I be to protect my life, my values, my family? There are few questions more important than these. Here in these pages are the results of one man's quest for answers. It's the real thing. Stephen Barnes. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I hope that was interesting. Next time we'll get into the meat of the book and see what Roy Miller really has to say. I hope it stirred up some interest in those of you who haven't read it yet. And if you do want to get a copy, you can get it in most bookstores and most places where you get ebooks online. Anyways, thanks for watching and stay tuned with Let's Talk About Prepping for future videos. Stay safe out there, everyone. Thank you.